in today it will be uh, mostly about uh, history and heritage, its role in our society, especially also in city planning. And so uh, the first question I will be asking him is about uh, our uh, housing estates and new towns, and what happened in terms of its, uh, its uh, development. And after that, uh, uh, Norisan will probably and, and Nur Hayati will, will be talking, uh, asking about the uh, about his history and heritage. I think this is uh, what the conversation is about today. And I'm happy that uh, he just so has brought some slides for us to to, uh, to look at. And this is something which uh, I think is beneficial to all of us now. Now, uh, so to begin with, uh, I would like to perhaps get uh, some feedback from. Uh, uh, Dr. Hijaz on, on, on what, what happened in our uh, scenario of city planning. Uh, Hijaz, as we can see from his history, has a planning background. And I'm quite curious to, to know, um, we have sort of like two extremes in so-called city planning. On the one extreme, we've got, you know, housing estates or new towns, you know, like Taman Denken or this Taman Konon or this kind of new towns in which uh, it's uh, mostly, to me, quite uh, dehumanized in the sense that uh, if you compare it to such uh, places, uh, other places like in uh, UK or in uh, Australia, um, it's, it's giving precedence mostly to vehicular access and you cannot even breathe in any of these places. For instance, you can't even find a toilet if you want to. You can't even go to pray if you want to. Yeah. Uh, that's not that convenient. And uh, they would always make these rows and rows of shop houses without any breaks. And uh, even the, the planning of the housing estates, you just plonk one uh, padang and that's about it. There's no pockets or spaces here and there. That does not really encourage um, outside life. And uh, for some reason, someone has decided that we should just stay in our home, go to the office or go to the school and then come back to our home. That, that's about it. You know, life is about I call it, uh, um, it's just inside, and, and there's not much place outside. Uh, once uh, in, uh, in Johor, there was a Tesco, and there was a few other buildings like McDonald's. There was a nice empty space that could be outside, but then it's also turned into a hotel. Okay, so, so this is what was happening in terms of the planning mindset in the industry. That's number one. On the other extreme, we've got Putrajaya so-called city in a garden or garden in the city, whichever one it is. But still, uh, we have uh, issues of um, uh, you know, moving from one place to another place. Uh, again, although we have trees, more trees than, than we can see in, uh, around here, but then uh, again, it's difficult to, to live like a human. Uh, when you go to the uh, to places like the, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, I, I had to uh, deal with my uh, housing loan and when you go to these buildings they are all government buildings and there are no hotels, there's no restaurant, there's no shopping complex, it's all zoned in, in separate uh, separate places. So you have a life of uh, you know being instructed this is where you do your business, this is where you are supposed to have fun and this is where you are it's just sort of like a what do you call it an orchestrated uh, thing you know when a uh, human being is uh, something spontaneous and also inspired in, in various different manner. Uh, this idea of mixed use is not bad. Traveling on foot is a problem. Uh, so what's happening in the, in the mindset of planners, and this is the question that uh, I might like to begin with in this very in this, uh, late morning. <laughs> okay, to start with, you know, city planning. A different use the mic. I mean, they can hear it. What is it it's, it's different yeah. from what is historical background. In the early years, historically, towns or cities started from the convenience of communication, which means uh, during that time there's big ships. Therefore, a lot of the cities are near the port for, for, that, for that matter, many of them. And some of the cities in the old period, it, is also the bastions of a, of a kingdom, the king. So that's, that's how they build the city. And of course the Romans, you know, the famous Romans. 
Alexander the Great, as you know, wherever he conquered a place, he built a city. He has a, you know, a group of his own engineers and everything else, just built cities. And they all have a certain concept of cities. But today, cities are completely different for different needs. And they need to be, they need to be organized. Uh, it's not natural anymore. It's not like organic things that just naturally grow, like Kuala Lumpur, for example, in the beginning, the confluence of the river. That's where trading started, tin miners and so on. And they just grew just like that. But actually, the port is supposed to be in Port Blank. Uh, so it, today, it has to be organized. And therefore, you have new cities like Iskandar, Uputraja. In all city planning, of course, the real nightmare is the private old motor cars. It is really the drudgery and it is the unnecessary evil. But it is necessary for, for us uh, as we get more affluence, pr prosperity, and we want easy communication, easy mobility, and therefore we must use cars. And every city planning today will be centered on the necessary how to cope with the cars. In other words, you plan cities according to the needs of the city, of the cars, not the people anymore. Vehicle center. It is, in a way, it's, that. it's a terrible thing to say, but it is true. Whether it's a new city, like Putrajaya, or Iskandra, it's the same thing. It's motor driven. Take Putrajaya, for example. Putrajaya is, is a government sponsored city and it is for administrative purposes. It can be in many ways, many other peoples. And you take the models like in big cities because maybe at that time we want to be proud and to show to the world we could have administrative city as good as Canberra, if not better, or Washington, or any other place. But many other places haven't got that kind of thing. England, for example, London. You know, the centre is the parliament, is the centre. But you don't have an administrative city. You do have it by the by the cell at Westminster, for example. Even the Prime Minister's place that he has a meeting is in the ten down the street. So it's a different kind of thing altogether. Whereas the others have become more pompous, like in Kremlin, and other cities have different kind of concept of administrative city. So we're taking a models like the new models like Canberra, uh, not quite the same as Brazil, the Brazil. And, and that's where we are. It, is, it's, it can be done in, in many ways, of course. Unfortunately, because it is against a vehicle driven, I would Putrajaya is in a way isolated and every ministry has its own autonomy, it's not together. And and it is pompous in some way, it is it's big avenues, very impressive. And in the notions of the old town planners of Ebenezer Howard of the Garden City. And that's what it's all about, you know. A little care about human being, their interaction and so on. Indeed, what they are saying that all you have to do is go to the guy and bring your car, see the minister, whoever you want to see, do your business and go home. Uh, you're not living there or spending some time there. And that's what it is. It's just equal to in another world. But that is what is done. You know, it's, it's very hard to undone, but impressive nevertheless. But it is not for human being, you know, not for ordinary people and so on. And you hardly find, very hard to find where you can meet except near the mosque or near the square. And the square also is meant to be kind of a square, like a Tanaman square, with broad avenues for parade. Absolutely, the purpose are different altogether. It's purely for that.
and and you can't find a place where you can gather with a lot of people like to go and so they try to create it but it's not there yet perhaps in the future the only thing is like like our city in Malaysia where people congregate is where is the shopping mall that's where you spend most of the time at least in the British period you spend your time in Pada that's where you you congregate it's a different emphasis, different things of the character to city planning. Iskandra is nothing else, it's commercially driven. That's all they do, they want to make money and that's all. They don't care about the poor people. They all this middle class income, the one that has car that can travel in there. And there's lack of all those humanity. It's because it's commercially driven. And it, it, there's not enough amenity for the public, for the people. And as I say, it's, it's just like that. At least in the small townships, not the big city, but would be a big city like Iskandar, has a different thing altogether because it is a smaller scale still. Uh, except for new city around the periphery of Kuala Lumpur, where they call it a city. Where there's, you know, there's a lot of new cities spring up when you have a group of buildings, they call it a city. But one Malaysia city also is coming and so on, it's, it's like that. At the Atullah's like exchange, but, uh, and they call it a city. But the one that's going outside, it's a new township, at least it has some humanistic kind of approach because the scale is different. But still, it is vehicle driven. You have to do that, you know. And it is the trouble with the town planner. They, they just not uh, enough, but look into it or revise it to suit the occasion or to suit our purpose. And they will say that this is the regulations for the main road or for the it should be so much wide for the for the small road so much with this with that. And this is more or less governed by regulation. Rather than the olden days that you see that have been sprung up shop houses and so on, they are more of a scale, small scale. The building is maybe two or three story at the most. People can walk in the front house, albeit it's a bit cramped, but still it's there. And you can huddle into old cities like Ipoh and old cities like that. It has that kind of really, a lot of interaction with people. And, and you know, it's a human scale, more, more or less, you know, and, and even at the point of being crowded or congested, you still have the feeling that there's a lot of people, and that, that the town meant for the people, not for the people. And that's sad to say it is like that. Yeah. Until, until I think the modes, some things will change, and this is my kind of my favorite topics, cars. The motor cars for the last hundred years has not changed very much. It's still four wheels, but spare wheel. All it has changed is better electronic design. You know, better this, better that, comfort leather. But essentially it's still four wheel, and that's how it Unless that change, the future of a city, the future of livelihood will be the same. Now, however, there may a time, I said, will be change. And the change will, will be that vehicle itself. And for, for tomorrow, for the future, I would envision that new vehicle of ownership will be the flight cars, kind of hovercraft. It has hap not happened yet at motor cars. It's very expensive in the beginning, only the rich can afford it. But today, even a driver, my driver, own the car. So this flying motor cars, as I say, or have a car, is still in its infancy, early stage, and very expensive still. But when it becomes as popular as motor car, the whole scenario of our lifestyle, of our living and so on would be different. 
and this is the future of tomorrow, exciting. How can it be different? Because those roads is no longer in use anymore. You don't need car to go on roads because you can fly the car. You don't need that. You can convert all this road into multi-story building if you want. Now straight all along the road if you want to convert that without disturbing any more land, converting land into the inner whatever. That itself is simple. Your car park is no, no longer on the ground. It can be on the 23rd floor. It can be on the 10th third, third floor. Just go in, run into your living room. That's how exciting it is. And you want to go to work, the same thing. And if you want people to go to Russia, it's the same thing. Just take your flying car, hop at every place, and then you can have dinner on one side, cinema on the other side. That's the future of the world. The scenario will change, our lifestyle will change, and not only that, there's no frontier anymore. Because how can you have immigration and so on to stop people from going from one country to the other? It's simply impossible. So the whole people of the world become one. Exciting to know that. And that's what will change the world. Yeah, I was just wondering uh, about the, uh, the development of, say, such towns like uh, Subang Jaya or Tanding Jaya. The idea uh, that we live, uh, we look at is that, for instance, like city of like Edinburgh or in, in, in London, although it's historical, the, it, it is a point about living and working in the city. It's what we call inner city living. And perhaps that is the reason why they would have parks, they would have breathable spaces, they would have all these conveniences. But uh, in Malaysia, when they build new cities, the, 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 the imagination is about living somewhere else and going to do your business in this place, and, and, and it's, a, it's a whole separate zone. Okay? And that is why we cannot, uh, we cannot, we just, again, that's the point, going just to go there and just uh, going back to your, to your own uh, uh, home. Uh, was that that kind of thinking, or did they never even thought about inner city living uh, when they, they designed uh, Daling Jaya and Subang Jaya, if you can recall, the, the discussions awal awal? No, that it is the old theory or the, the old model. They are all, in, in many ways, they are very highly dense. The city, you know, Paris, for example, or London. Yeah, but that. But at the most, they are six stories building. And they, they built together very tightly. The road is still small. And of course, they lay out whatever it is, parks and so on. <coughs> but that's one model of, the, of doing it. Because the, the modern theory is, you know, if you want to save the ground, without occupying it, you just get the same density by bringing that density, for example, into one building, a tower, and leaving the others, the rest, into a garden. And that's the new theory of to do that, and therefore they do that. They, unfortunately, young people are greedy, and land prices are very high. Instead of them living in lot of, of what got cleaned area, they congested it, all these tall buildings there, all together, and that's why the whole, the whole thing doesn't work. You, you, um, you lost their human scale. You don't see. If you go to Paris, what's so beautiful about it is that you can go rows and rows of, of building shop houses. There are nothing else but shop houses, really. But it's a beautiful shop houses. London, too, is in the beginning was shop houses. They stay outside, they make business downstairs and so on. We cannot live like that yet. 